Hello, so this is a combination Sudoku theory plus puzzle solve. Um, definitely give this puzzle a try, and the link is in the description if you'd like to. Um, I'm going to go over the rules first, then I'll talk about the theory, and then I'll do my solve. So the rules to this puzzle are normal killer Sudoku rules in 6x6, six six. so I'll go over each of those. So in 6x6 six six Sudoku, in each row, each column, and each 2x3 box, we are placing the digits 1 to 6 exactly once each. We also have these killer cages in the grid. Um, digits in a cage sum to the top left, so this could be, say, 1 plus 2 is 3, like that, or it could be 2 plus 1 is 3. Um, and additionally, you can't repeat digits in a cage, so these two digits, all that matters in this puzzle is these two digits can't be the same digit. They can't be two twos or two threes or whatever. Um, so those are the rules. Uh, go ahead and give it a try if you'd like to. There is a link in the description. Uh, I'm going to go over the theory behind this because it's really interesting. So you may recall a puzzle uh, a couple years ago by Philip Newman called White Room. That was the result of discovering the minimal um, amount of coverage by killer cages in a 9x9. Nine nine. Uh, in that case, it was um, 18. So um, Philip later then proved that there were none with 17 coverage. So White Room is a minimal uh, killer Sudoku puzzle. When we define minimal as the number of cells covered by killer cages. Now for a 6x6, six six, we know the theoretical minimum would be 8, because we know that 8 givens is the minimum number of given digits for a classic 6x6. Six six. And so a coverage of 8, uh, you, you, couldn't, you can't cover just 7 cells with killer cages and end up with a unique puzzle. Otherwise, you would also be able to just fill those as givens. All the covered cells you'd be able to fill as givens, and then that would also be unique. Um, and that doesn't happen. So we knew that 8 was the minimum. Um, and so uh, just yesterday in theory and programming, I just sort of posed the question, have we found a white room for 6x6? Six six? And the answer was, um, well, we've experimented with it. We found some with 10 coverage, but we don't know that that's minimal. And so we really realized that it's pretty easy to brute force a 6x6 six six in this way. And Sponce, who is the um, sort of disco main discoverer of this puzzle, um, who I'm going to credit, um, and the et al is other people who contributed in theory and programming. But anyway, um, Spons came up with a C++ program, which I'll link the GitHub in the description, um, which uh, sort of produced all of the kind of unique configurations we'd have to check um, for 8x8, and those were all checked, and none of them were unique. There's a, there's a few with two solutions, not very many, but there's a few with two solutions left, but none that are unique. And so we went on to 9, and he found that this was the only configuration, uh, other than transformations, um, that could even potentially be unique, and it turned out to be unique. Uh, and so we know this is the only configuration uh, beyond transforms um, that has 9-cell coverage. So this is the minimal 6x6 six six killer Sudoku. Um, of course, you can do some transformations, like this 11 cage can be moved right one, this 8 cage can be moved right one, like you can swap these columns. Uh, you can also uh, renumber it, so the sums of these cages, there's a few other sums of these cages that also work, um, but they're, they're going to solve basically the same as each other, so we're going to call this the only puzzle. If you try to solve the other ones, it'll be the exact same solve path. All right, cool. Um, well, I think that's all the context you need, um, and I'm going to try to solve this. So I'm told it actually solves pretty cleanly, which it didn't have to. It is just a discovered puzzle, but it does, so let's give it a try. I'm going to get started right now. All right, well, a three cage is only one, two. A seven cage, if we can't repeat digits, is only one, two, four. This one, two pair makes this a four, and so these can't be the four. Um, Eleven cage is only five, six. Now our eight cage can be, uh, can't be one, seven. There's no seven, but it could be two, six, or three, five. And I don't see a restriction on that yet. Um, hmm. So this is going to be three, five, six, just for the column. That makes a three five six triple in this box. So this is one two four. Um, it's interesting. How do we? What actually resolves this? Um, we need one two three four in this column. Ah, the one two don't go here because this one two here, and so the one two end up here as a hidden pair. Um, so this is a one two pair, and that that leaves the three four up here. So that makes this five six. And now the 5, 6 looks down. These can't be 5, 6, and these aren't 5, 6. So this is a 5, 6 pair. Removing 5, 6 from here, which makes this only... So this is only 2, 3, makes this only 5, 6. That makes a 5, 6 pair in this row. This is actually kind of neat. This is a 3 as a result. Um, these pairs are doing a lot of work. Um, 
So three, five, six across here, but this five, six pair says they aren't here. So the five, six pair goes up here. And so this is our three. Um, and so this is one, two, one or two only. Yeah, that one, two, five, six goes with this one foot. We need a, uh, um, we need a four over here. What's my, what's my next step? Ah, this one, two pair says one, two aren't here. So this is, this is our hidden one, two pair, and this is a naked four. Um, that four puts a four down here. Actually, that four has been there. Okay, just not seeing things. Um, five, six pair does put a hidden five, six across here. I like these hidden pairs <laughs> that are happening here. Uh, that's a three, making this two plus six is eight. Giving us the five and the six, giving us the one and the two, and the one and the two. One and two here, two and one here, five and six here, five, six, five, six, five, six. That's our one. This box finishes with a four. Um, we get a two and a three here. That's three and two. Um, up here we need a one and a four. That one gives us four and one, gives us three and four. Uh, this is our three, this is our five, and we're done. All right. So yeah, pretty straightforward puzzle. You get a three in the corner also. That's nice. Um... So yeah, you can see how like these pairs really, really restricted things. This, this, this three here with this eleven here seems really powerful because it made this one two hidden pair here. Um, yeah, and I, th I think we had that, that's kind of like that, that's a really interesting concept. That's kind of you know I know it's discovered. There's no one made this puzzle intentionally, but the there, there's always going to be interesting things in minimally like discovered puzzles that that have an interesting property to them. Um, Sometimes they're going to be extremely difficult to solve. Sometimes they're going to be extremely easy. This is this was a nice balance. I like how this one solved. So anyway, uh, let me know how you did, um, and let me know if you have any uh, additional questions about the theory here. Uh, you can go to the the GitHub link that I linked in the description as well, uh, if you'd like to uh, learn about sponsors, write up about how this was discovered, and more details about it. And um, I'll also include a link to White Room, and um, I. I think I solved White Room. If I find my solve of White Room, I'll link that too. So you'll know whether that appears there. Um, and um, so White Room is kind of the 9x9 version of this, which also has a really neat solve path. More difficult than this one, though. Uh, and of course, if you enjoyed this, why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below. Mm -hmm.